Welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Learning. So today we are going to discuss about monohybrid cross, dihybrid cross, and trihybrid cross. These crosses are the methods of breeding uh, among the cells. And um, this video we will have a look on what is monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. And we will discuss the trihybrid cross in our coming video. So let's just figure out these two definitions first. It is very important to learn to know about these. What is homozygous pair and what is heterozygous pair? Then we will move towards our monohybrid cross first. So let's just see what is homozygous pair and what is heterozygous pair. So we all know that what is allele, each gene consists of two alleles. Alleles are basically parts of uh, alternative parts of the gene. It may be homozygous, it may be heterozygous. Like for the length of the plant, the plant may be tall. It may be that both the alleles are capital T, capital T. And it may be that both alleles of a gene, particular for height, may be small t and small t. They may be heterozygous. Heterozygous pair, what is heterozygous pair? The alleles are different or non-identical. Alleles may be different or non-identical means they have hetero condition. Hetero means different, homo means same. So if the alleles in a gene for a particular trait, like for height, I am talking about height here, it may be for a seed color in case of plant, it may be seed shape, it may be eye color in humans, whatever it is, it may be homozygous and it may be heterozygous. Alleles may be in the same state both of these alleles in a gene for a particular trait may be capital t capital t small t small t or it may be different like capital t and small t it is in heterozygous condition so now we know that what is homozygous pair and what is heterozygous pair homozygous pair when the alleles are identical and they are same there is no dominant one and no recessive one then heterozygous pair is when the alleles are different and uh, there is heterozygosity and one allele is dominant over the other here is the uh, capital t is dominant over the recessive small t so next see what is monohybrid cross the monohybrid cross a monohybrid cross is the hybrid of two individuals with homozygous genotype which results in opposite phenotype for a certain genetic trait so here is an example of monohybrid cross in monohybrid cross we will always just talk about homozygous pair i have already told you what is homozygous pair in which both of the alleles are identical so in monohybrid cross each individual have homozygous pair and other individual has its own homozygous pair. When both of these homozygous pair cross, they form a new, um, they form a new genotype, and they have the opposite phenotype. Let's just see. It's the definition. You should write this definition in your exam or in your class. Let's just see an example, and we will better able to understand with the help of example. So let's just see a monohybrid cross or monohybrid example. Suppose we take a homozygous tall plant. Suppose a pea plant. One is homozygous tall. Homozygous tall means that its genotype contains uh, uh that's its height gene contains the allele that are both identical with each other homozygous tall and heterozygous homozygous short homozygous short means the gene for height uh, which is in this plant is short both the alleles are identical homozygous short plant when we cross the homozygous tall plants with the homozygous short plants it results in the gamete formation t capital t and small t when these both of these gametes are crossed they form a new genotype in this case the the phenotype phenotype okay let's just uh, distinguish between phenotype and genotype phenotype is basically the physical appearance of a plant or any particular uh, organism we are talking about and the genotype it, is its genes what are in its genes it's a genotype so in case in this case the phenotype what will be the phenotype capital t and small t is formed this is the hybrid tall hybrid tall or you can say it as heterozygous pair of alleles because the one is capital t it came from this tall plant and other one is the small t it came from this plant so the heterozygous uh, pair has now a phenotype of tall plant all the plants in the f1 generation that are the resultant of homozygous tall and homozygous short are phenotypically tall all the plants are tall but their genes have the heterozygosity in them and it may eventually uh, show the, uh, the that part that small part later on so the f1 generation is all about tall plants in phenotype and heterozygosity is present in genotype but it didn't show it didn't appear because phenotype appeared all the tall plants now if we cross the f1 selfing of f1 generation now if we cross the f1 generation with f1 like what is our f1 generation capital t and small t so if we cross them in this way both of them produces a gene like capital t small t same is in this case because we are self uh, multiplying the f1 t1 and t capital t and small t so these gametes are now crossed with the help of punnett square punnett square is basically a table format a table uh, the table method in which we cross the gametes when they are larger in number so these are the gametes capital t capital t from f1 one plant and these are the gametes from f1 two plant capital t and small t capital t capital t will be written in this box capital t small t will be written in this box capital t small t will be written in this box similarly small t small t will be written in this box so this is the way by which we add our gametes into the punnett scale and find out our resultant uh, pairing so in this case what will be the phenotype you can easily see the three 
uh, boxes have a dominant E, this one, this one, and this one. It means the phenotype will be there are four total boxes out of which three are tall plants and only one is small plant. So three phenotypic ratio will be three tall plants ratio one small plant. It is a phenotypic relation. But if we talk about the genotype, it will be totally different. Only one or out of the four have the homozygous tall plant, which is one. Two of them have the heterozygous, this one and this one have the heterozygous tall plant. So it will be two and only one have the homozygous short plant. It will be one. So the phenotypic ratio of the monohybrid cross will be 3 ratio 1 and genotypic ratio of the monohybrid cross will be 1 ratio 2 ratio 1. It is written in this way. So it is very clear now that although F1 generation has all the tall plant, it have that ability to produce the small plant too because it's present in its gene but it is suppressed. It is a recessive one, short, short one allele. That is why it is not showing in the F1 generation. But when we cross F1 with F1, we can easily see that, that there was a presence of uh, short uh, trade uh, short high trades in the genes in f1 so we got one ratio one ratio two ratio one genotype in the f2 generation so this is this is the whole uh, steps this is the whole process this is the whole example of monohybrid cross how it works monohybrid cross was first discovered by mendels when he worked on the pea plant he discovered he uh, he studied the height of pea plant and he discovered that the plant has also suppressed or recessive type of genes alleles that can be shown in the later generation now we will see what is tie hybrid cross basically the tie hybrid cross is the cross between two different genes that differ in two observed traits okay so in the previous one in the monohybrid cross we have only discussed about one trait which is height of the plant in this case we will discuss about two traits side by side in a plant he observed two different genes that differ in the two observed traits in the previous, in the mono, mono means one, di means two. So the mono hybrid cross was the one in which we study only one trait of a plant. In this case, we will study, in this case, or Mendel studied, we can say Mendel studied uh, two types of traits. So he studied the pea plant's seed and its color, selected two traits, the shape of the seed and the color of the seed. The two traits were studied side by side and he crossed them and this uh, hybrid or this cross is known as a dihybrid cross. So one seed was of pea plant was round yellow seed and the other seed type of the pea plant is wrinkled but green in color so let's just suppose that we have a pure form of parents like a seed that is purely yellow both of his uh, so these two alleles are for these two capital r capital r both of these alleles are a part of gene that is responsible for the round shape of seed capital y capital y both of these alleles of a gene is responsible for the yellow color of the seed so they are homozygous traits there is no there is no heterozygosity the alleles are very identical to each other they are not different from each other so this is the pure form of seed round yellow seed similarly pure form of wrinkled and green seed is here cap small r small r is representing the wrinkleness of the seed small r, small y small y represents the green color of the seed they are in their pure form but we are discussing two traits side by side one trait is the shape of the seed the other trait is the color of the seed now they form the chemise capital r small capital y small r small y when the gametes are formed they cross as a result they form capital r small r we write them as combining all the gametes now combine all the gametes and we get this so f1 generation will be capital r small r capital y small y now if we see the phenotype of f1 generation we can easily see that all the seeds will be round and all the seeds will be yellow because yellow round and yellow are dominant and small r and small y wrinkled and green are the recessive alleles so the phenotype for all the seeds are round and yellow but in the case of genotype there are presence of heterozygosity and they differ because there is a presence of green and wrinkled seeds also the alleles for the genes that are responsible for the wrinkled and green color of the seeds are also present in the F1 generation so later on they will be exposed after one generation so now similarly as we have done in the uh, in the monohybrid cross we will also do this in the dihybrid cross now self pollination f1 multiply with f1 but what, what were our f1 capital r small i capital y small y it will be multiplied it will be crossed with itself uh, like capital r small i capital y small y now write them in such a way that we get these four types of possible gametes from the f1 and f1 cross write the, all the possibilities like it may be round and yellow it may be round and green it may be yellow but wrinkled it may be green but wrinkled so there are only these four possibilities or you can say that form the gametes from these two cross and now these gametes will be written in this and in this way so now we will this is opponent here i have to draw the lines here but i just uh, thought it would be messy because i you know i have to color these all so i would i didn't draw the lines but you have to so draw the lines and it will be your Punnett square. Write down the gametes in Punnett square. These gametes are for the maleness. These gametes are for the female ones. So these gametes will be crossed in such a way like, like it, it will be multiplied in this way. Capital R, Y, capital R, capital Y, capital R. Write down in this. Then this one cross with this one. Write down in this column. Then this one will be crossed with this one. And similarly, this one will be crossed in this one. Now one will be multiplied with this one. And you will write it here. This one. And you will write it here. Now this one will multiply this one. So similarly, you are going to multiply each of them and write them in other specific places. Now this row, this uh, this gamete is going to cross with this, with this, with this, and with this also. So you can write it here. So in this way, you write them down. And now you can easily see 
which new combination of seeds that are formed as a result of afro generation have the yellow round seeds have the wrinkled yellow seeds have the wrinkled green seeds capital round and yellow in this case capital r capital r capital y small i what are the uh, capital r representing it is representing the round shape capital y representing the yellow color small y representing the green color of the seed so in this case case the capital r capital r representing that it is round and capital y small y in this case in the case of color we know that capital y is dominating so we can also say that it is yellow in color so the yellow all the yellow we are, i am representing here is a round and yellow and there are also some yellow but wrinkled in this case see there is no presence of capital r it means that capital r if not present then small r is whole we have so it is wrinkled but yellow it is yellow but wrinkled it is uh, green and wrinkled it is yellow and wrinkled it is round yet green see there are capital r and small i means it is round but small by small by mean there is no presence of dominant yellow so it is green in color so this is how you can see that each seed as f2 generation produce has its own identity has its own phenotype and genotype so the phenotype ratio will be phenotype ratio i have already explained you is the ratio that you use when you are uh, talking about the physical appearance of the trait so the phenotype the physical appearance will be there will be 1 2 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there will be total nine seeds that are round and also yellow in color despite of the fact that they are gen genotypically different but they are phenotypically there are phenotypically present nine round yellow seeds genotypically they are different but phenotypically they are nine in number then we have wrinkled yellow seeds which is 1 2 3 in number wrinkled yet yellow so there is a variation when we first began the dye habit course we had the wrinkled and green seeds but now we have a variation we have the wrinkled yet yellow seeds they are three in number next the round and green one 1 2 3 there are three seeds that are round yet green in color there is also a variation so now we will see wrinkled and green so there is only one seed that is wrinkled yet green in color that remains in its original form so the genotypically they are different but phenotypically there are nine round yellow seeds there are three wrinkled yellow seeds and there are three round green seeds and there are only one wrinkled green seed so this is how the punnett scale helps us to identify or to multiply our gametes and find out the f2 result this is the dye habit course so let's just see it it is it's i just have explained its phenotypic ratio now we will see its genotypic ratio genotypic ratio may be quite complex for you but if you understand it 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 will be very helpful for you so the phenotypic ratio i have already explained is round yellow is 9 in number wrinkled yellow 3 round green 3 wrinkled green 3 in this way the ratio for the dye hybrid cross will be 9 3 9 ratio 3 ratio 3 ratio 1 so this is all about the phenotypic ratio now we will see about what is genotypic ratio so let's just move to the diagram back in case of genotypic ratio round yellow but homozygous seed will be one round yellow but homozygous homozygous in terms of shape also in terms of color now other type is homozygous round and heterozygous yellow homozygous see it is round because the homozygous round traits are homozygous capital r capital r but the color is heterozygous and heterozygous yellow similarly heterozygous round where is the this one heterozygous round and homozygous yellow no it is not this one where is the homozygous this one heterozygous round although it is round but the roundness or wrinkled both are present so it is heterozygous round and homozygous yellow both of these uh, color responsible alleles are yellow the so homozygous yellow homo round homo green one is the one seed then we have hetero round and homo green this one hetero round is hetero because round is also present allele and the allele that is responsible for wrinkled also present hetero round but homo green they are two this one this one then we have homo but homo wrinkled and homo yellow this one it is one in number then we have homo wrinkled and what here is the homo wrinkled homo wrinkled and hetero yellow this one they are two homo wrinkled wrinkled the shape is all there is no capital r homo wrinkled both of these but they are hetero yellow they are two in number then we have homo wrinkled and homo green this one so this is the way you can write the genotypic ratio now i am showing you in its written form genotypic ratio round yellow homozygous is one homozygous round and heterozygous yellow is two i have also written them in the bracket so you can easily understand them that which when i am talking about heterozygous round but homozygous yellow they are two in number heterozygous round and heterozygous yellow they are four in number homozygous round and homozygous green one which is this one is one in number heterozygous round homozygous green they are two in number which is this one homo wrinkled but homo yellow in color is one homozygous wrinkled heterozygous yellow two which is this one homozygous wrinkled and homozygous green is one which is this in number so this is the genotypic ratio that how they are genetically different from each other so this is all about the dye hybrid cross mono hybrid cross and uh, what are the phenotypes what are the genotype what are the homozygous pair what heterozygous pair i hope you like this video and do subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends so that they can understand this concept very deeply 